Hello everybody and welcome to Skirt Garage. My name is Connor and in today's video, I'm gonna try my darndest to convince you guys to get some seat time in one of these. It's a 2018 BMW M2, but really any M2 for the matter. I love this car so much that I've actually bought two of them. Yes, you heard me right. I have bought two of the exact same car, exact same year. And I'm gonna try to explain as best I can why somebody would do that, especially me, because truthfully guys, I love so many cars. I wanna try all of them. I'm not addicted to any just one brand. I want to uh, taste all the flavors, uh, essentially of all the cars. But this thing just, it pulled me back. And I wanna tell you guys kind of some of the reasons why it did that to me. And hopefully, like I said, convince you guys that you should try one out for yourself. So with that, let's get this video started. I'm gonna share uh, a couple interesting facts about this and some of the things I've noticed in my ownership of this car, a 2018 M2 with the manual transmission and my previous 2018 M2 that I, uh, I bought with the dual clutch transmission. So with that guys, let's get this video started. Okay guys, let's quickly just walk around the car and I will briefly and very quickly tell you some of the things I love about it. First off, the wide fender flares. This thing looks so aggressive. I do have aftermarket apex wheels on the car. They suit this thing so great. They have a beautiful multi-spoke pattern and a gorgeous concave uh, look to the wheels. I think it looks very, very good. The front end of this car is unmistakable. It has to be an aggressive M car and you can tell. I think that the, the bumper down there with the front fascia looks killer absolutely love it i have all the black accents on the car the black side markers the carbon fiber mirror caps if you pop inside you will also see the car has the nice alcantara and carbon fiber shifter the open weaved carbon fiber down here it's kind of cool you can hear it scratch uh, uh, I just There's no lacquer on top. Beyond that, the rest of the cabin is honestly pretty basic. Uh, it has Harbin Kardon sound system. This is the LCI variant. So it's a backlit dash. You can actually just about see the numbers back there. And when you turn the car on, let me see if I can show you. When you turn the car on, you see how everything lights up from the back. Let me start it. So this is what it looks like when it's all started up. Killer car. It does have the new iDrive, which is touchscreen. I think there might have even been a newer variant of this by now. But uh, yeah, let me show you what it looks like. Down here, because this is not the competition, there's only Sport and Comfort. If you double click it, it comes to Sport Plus and you get this nice little graphic over here as well. It sounds really, really good. Um, it says the car isn't warmed up even though I drove like 20 minutes to get here. So uh, I think I can still rev it a little bit. Let's go outside and talk about a couple more features. For that, I'm going to open the hood. To do that on all BMWs, you have to double pull. So let's go outside. Okay guys, this engine gets a lot of flack for not being a true M engine. And frankly, I don't think that that's totally necessary because it does share a lot of the components from the S55. Granted, I have to agree that the S55 is a little bit more of a special engine with the cooling that it offers, with the twin turbo setup that it offers. It's much more tunable as far as high-end horsepower goes. But this, honestly, guys, is really a fantastic engine. So let's talk about it. Uh, first off, if you do buy an N55 BMW M2 like I have here, I highly recommend you get one of these guys. It's a charge pipe. I don't know if you can see way down in there, there's a metal anodized pipe. These from the factory come with plastic ones and they're very common to break if you up the boost on these cars. I used to have an intake on this very car, but the swooshiness, the kind of sounds actually kind of drove me crazy. So I ended up taking it off. What else? If you do turn up the boost on these cars, it is highly recommended that you get a aftermarket intercooler. This is a larger 
CSF intercooler. It really helps to keep the uh, charge temperatures on this car down. And I highly recommend that you get one if, uh, if you do plan to up the boost on your car. Uh, let's quickly talk about some of the horsepower numbers that you can expect from this car if you plan to tune it. This, like I mentioned earlier, is the N55 engine. And there's some interesting facts about this that I want to share with you guys. First off, this is a single turbo uh, inline six, which is a recipe for a massive amount of torque. This engine, to be fair, is fuel limited. The only reason why it doesn't make more horsepower isn't necessarily because the turbos are too small, that's a contributing factor, but the main reason why these cars are running out of, I guess, power on the top end is because the fuel pumps can't keep up with it. There are a lot of members who have changed the fuel pumps on these cars and have, uh, I guess, realized about 50 horsepower more than people who have already massaged these engines. So let's quickly talk about one of my favorite features about this car, and that is the torque. Man, this thing has torque oozing out of its ears. It is everywhere. This car does have a larger intercooler, a downpipe, and a boot mod tune, but my white BMW M2 that I had back in the past, that only had a stage one tune from VF Engineering, and that car still made about 440 horsepower and 500 foot-pounds of torque. I dynoed the car, that's kind of how I know those numbers. While I haven't dynoed this car, I can only guesstimate with the addition of a larger intercooler, with the addition of a downpipe, this thing has to be making at least 450 horsepower and at least 530 foot-pounds of torque. And that honestly, guys, puts this car in a very good company of cars. Immediately, I can think of my last, uh, my last car I had before this, a Jaguar F-Type R. That had a massive V8 five liter engine with a huge supercharger on top, and that thing only made 502 foot-pounds of torque. The AMG GTS, the facelift version, that thing has, I believe, 494 foot-pounds of torque from factory. This thing even makes more torque than the outrageous uh, 911 991 Turbo. That car, everyone mentions how big of a torque monster it is. Well, I'm telling you, this car tuned is even crazier. It's an absolute beast, and especially around town. Remember, guys, I've talked about this in other videos, there's a crossover point when you're driving a car, and on the dyno specifically, it's called the crossover point, it's 5200 RPM. At 5200 RPM, you stop using torque and you start using more horsepower for your acceleration. This thing, around town, nobody is really crossing over 5200 RPM, unless you're absolutely gunning it on an open stretch of road. You don't really do that, but this thing making max torque at 1400 RPM and Obviously, anywhere you go underneath 5,200 RPM, this can keep up with just about anything. And that pays massive dividends on the road, but also amazing dividends on track. And we'll talk more about how this thing behaves on track later, but just know that one of my absolute favorite features of this car and something that you will absolutely feel if you drive this car is the immense torque it makes. Let's move on. Okay guys, driving the M2. What I want to talk about first is the size of this car. I think that this is literally the perfect size of a sports car. It is not too big, but it is not too small. You can fit adults behind you, no problem, but you also feel like you're more connected to the car because of its overall size. Now, let's talk about size real quick. This car has a wheelbase of 106 inches, which makes it exactly six and a half inches shorter than the new BMW M3. And you guys might be thinking, well, six inches isn't, isn't a lot. Uh, if you think that, ask about 99% of the male population. It actually is a huge difference when you talk about wheelbase. It completely changes the way that this thing handles when going around corners. This car feels so much more compact 
when you compare it to the larger M3. This thing, when you turn, it feels like it's connected to your hips and the car moves in one fluid motion. You don't necessarily get that in the F80 M3. The F80 M3 kind of feels like they're a front and a rear uh, axle and they're acting a little bit differently from each other. And I think that's why this thing is so special. It just feels so nimble, so tossable. And these days, modern sports cars can really hide their weight uh, when going around corners because they have magnetic ride or they have uh, air shocks that can level the car back out around a corner. But what you can't hide when you go around a corner is transition speed. And all that means is that when you quickly turn right and then quickly turn left, how fast does the car settle again going back to the opposite direction? And this is, without a doubt, the best car I have ever owned at quick transition uh, speeds. Better than my Lotus, better than my M3, better than my F-Type, better than my Nissan GTR. This thing can handle the, the back and forth, almost slalom type motions incredibly well and it makes it feel just so tossable so nimble and granted you might not feel that on the street because there's very little opportunity on the street for you to actually do a slalom type movement but on track this thing is an absolute beast my father has an amg gt 63s formatic whatever longest name in the history of the planet and when he was following me on the racetrack, he couldn't take the same lines as me because this car is so much more nimble. And for that same reason, this car with half the horsepower was faster around the track. Wanna hear the most annoying sound in the world? Those are race brakes. Okay, let's talk about the manual transmission in this car. It's notchy, like everybody says all manual transmissions from BMW are. I'll give them that, it actually is pretty dang notchy. And beyond that, I've got nothing bad to say about it. I love it, it's amazing. The technology that comes in this car should make you want to own a manual transmission. Here's why, I know you can't see the, the stick uh, below, but I am not going to touch the gas pedal at all, and I'm going to downshift. I'll actually go up to fifth first. I'm not going to touch the gas pedal. Are you ready? Here is fifth to fourth. Here's fourth to third. I didn't move. I didn't bobble. It is the smoothest thing in the world. And I know it takes a little bit of the driver involvement out of it. But when you're driving day to day, when you have traffic, when your significant other is in the passenger seat, it is amazing absolutely incredible and if you want to defeat the system if you want to turn it all off all you have to do is hold down the stability control button and it'll turn all of it off and then you can rev match to your heart's desire and guys going from the dct i had in my first m2 to this manual transmission car i highly highly prefer the manual transmission car that's not to say that the dct wasn't great that it wasn't super fast and very capable i think it is and sometimes when i take this car out to my local racetrack i do wonder what it would be like to have a dct but this car for everywhere else honestly is just way more engaging and with the modern features that it has like hill hold and anti-stall and automatic rev match and synchronized rev matching on the way up the gears there's no reason why you shouldn't at least try a manual transmission in a modern bmw they take away 95% of the things that suck about a manual transmission and they give you all the benefit of all the engagement that you get when you drive one. So can't recommend the manual transmission enough. It's just playful, it's powerful, 
It's awesome to drive. Limited. I mean, it has so many things going for it. And if you're at all tempted by the platform, I urge you to just try it out. I think you'll be wildly surprised what this thing can do. Anyways, guys, that's all I have. Hope you've enjoyed this little review of the BMW M2. Don't forget to give this a like, a positive comment down below, and of course, one of these, a thumbs up. And with that, we will see you on the next video. Peace.